Here we're gonna look at a nice inequality problem. So we wanna start off assuming that we have two positive real numbers, we'll call them A and B. And the question that we wanna answer is, which is larger, A to the B plus B to the A, or A to the A plus B to the B? And I guess since we're asking this question in the first place, that really means that one of these is always larger than the other. Well, that's not totally true because they could definitely be equal if A and B were equal. So really we're talking about larger as being greater than or equal to. And the fact that we're asking this question and it has an answer means that we can just do a test case in order to get a guess for which one is bigger and then we can prove that guess using a more careful mathematical argument. So let's maybe take a equal to one and we'll take B equal to two and see what we get. So let's see, A to the B plus B to the A in this case is one squared plus two to the one, but that's three. But then A to the A plus B to the B. So that's gonna be one to the one plus two to the two, but that is five. And so clearly five is bigger than three. So we should expect this thing right here a to the A plus B to the B to be larger than A to the B plus B to the A. And that's like kind of beautiful because this object has a bit more symmetry built into it than this one right here. This is kind of like anti-symmetric. So let's maybe see how we can do this. So we'd like to take our guess and turn it into an inequality. So let's maybe write it like this. What we want to show is that a to the b plus b to the a is always less than or equal to a to the a plus b to the b. Now since there's some nice symmetry in terms of a and b, we might as well assume that a is less than or equal to b. So let's write that down. Without loss of generality, we're assuming that a is less than or equal to b. And now we'll take this inequality and break it into two equivalent inequalities that are a little bit easier to deal with. So I'll take it and branch it off with these two arrows. So the inequality that we'll have down the left-hand side, we will maintain the same base on both sides of the inequality. So that means we'll have something like a to the b minus a to the a is less than or equal to b to the b minus b to the a. And I should say, we're coming up with an equivalent list of inequalities to our goal inequality, but maybe we'll end up with something that's easy to deal with down here. Okay, so let's maybe separate this, these off. And on the right-hand side, we'll keep the exponent fixed on either side of the inequality. So that means we want something like b to the a minus a to the a is less than or equal to b to the b minus a to the b. And again, this is equivalent to our goal inequality. But maybe sometimes it'll be better to have the base fixed and sometimes it'll be bigger to have the exponent fixed. That's gonna depend on the overall size of a and b. Okay, so now let's jump down this line and see if we can simplify it a little bit. So first off, I want to notice that this looks like we've taken an integral and then evaluated it between two points. So in fact, this looks like we've taken the integral and gotten the function a to the x and evaluated it from a to b. And here we've got b to the x and we've evaluated it from a to b. Okay, but we can take this evaluation and turn it into a definite integral just by taking the derivative with respect to x on both sides. So that gives us the integral from a to b of natural log of a times a to the x dx is less than or equal to the integral from a to b of natural log of b times b to the x dx. So now this inequality is equivalent to this inequality, which is equivalent to this inequality, which is equivalent to our goal inequality. Okay, nice. So now what we'll do is notice that this inequality follows very quickly if we have the following really nice pr property. So we would like the two integrands to be in this same order. So that is the natural log of a times a to the x is less than or equal to the natural log of b times b to the x. And this needs to be true for all x on the interval of integration, so a to b. 
But now notice this inequality is like pretty hard to prove in general and actually not true in general unless we fix b to have a certain size. And that's exactly what we'll do. So let's maybe suppose here that b is bigger than or equal to one, but notice that means the natural log of b is bigger than or equal to zero. And that sets up a really nice inequality. So we've got the natural log of a times a to the x will be less than or equal to the natural log of b times a to the x. Okay, and so that's true because, well, the natural log of b is non-negative, so we know it goes in this ordering. Also, given that the fact that the natural log is an increasing function and we have that ordering over there, but now this is very clearly less than or equal to the natural log of b times b to the x because, again, b is bigger than a. So we've got that kind of setup here, and that follows because this b is bigger than or equal to 1. So it looks like in the case that b is bigger than or equal to 1, this inequality holds, which means our integral inequality holds, which means this inequality holds, this inequality holds, and finally our goal inequality holds. So now we just need to go down this other branch. And so this other branch will be the case when b is not bigger than or equal to 1. So we can write that in the following setup. So we've got the closed interval a, b is a subinterval of the open interval 0 to 1. Notice that very clearly follows from the fact that b will be less than 1, but a is less than or equal to b. And we can go ahead and just take a to be strictly less than b because obviously if a and b are equal, then this is an equality, not an inequality. So now we can play this same game that we did over here, turning it into an integral. But the integral is a little bit different in this case. So notice this looks like x to the a evaluated from a to b less than or equal to x to the b evaluated from a to b. So like I said, this is gonna be an equivalent inequality. But now taking the derivative of both sides, we can turn this evaluation of an integral into an integral. So that'll be the integral from a to b of a times x to the a minus one is less than or equal to the integral from a to b of b times x to the b minus 1 dx. So again, that is an equivalent formulation of our goal inequality, but now in the setup where b is less than 1. That's the one that we're looking at right now. Okay, so now we would like a similar nice setup over on this side that we had over here. What I mean by that is we would like the integrands to hold this same inequality. So let's write that down. We, we would like a x to the a minus 1 to be less than or equal to b x to the b minus 1. And this is going to be true for all x on the appropriate interval. I won't write that because we're running out of room. Okay, but now how can we look at that? Well, maybe it would be easier if we took the log of both sides and then we could more easily figure out that inequality or show that that inequality is true. So let's maybe go ahead and take the log of both sides. Notice that's going to give us the natural log of a plus a minus 1 times the natural log of x on the left hand side. And that's uh, using logarithm rules. Then we get something similar on the right hand side. So we'll get natural log of b plus b minus 1 times natural log of x. Okay. So just to reiterate, I'll underline this in red, and this is equivalent to the red underlined inequality. The red underlined inequality implies this higher inequality, which is furthermore equivalent to our goal. So notice this is not equivalent to the red underlined, but it's going in the right direction for our purposes. Okay, good. So now we can simplify this a little bit. We can move things around and then solve for natural log of x, and that gives us that this is equivalent to the natural log of x is less than or equal to 
the natural log of B minus the natural log of A over B minus A. And in fact, that inequality is what will finish this whole thing off. So let's see where we are. So our goal inequality was established in the case that B was bigger than or equal to one, where we, without loss of generality, assumed that A was less than or equal to B. Now, in the case when the closed interval A to B is contained in the open interval zero to one, we only needed to finish it off by showing that minus natural log of x was less than or equal to natural log of b minus natural log of a over b minus a. That's got to be true for all x on the closed interval a, b. Again, that will imply that a certain integral inequality held, which was equivalent to our inequality. Okay, so let's maybe see how we can do this. So one thing that we know is that the natural log is an increasing function. And so since it's an increasing function, we know the natural log of x will be bigger than or equal to the natural log of a for all x on the interval a, b. That's because a, that's because x is going to be bigger than or equal to a given that it's on that interval. Okay, but now we can invert this so that we're dealing with minus natural log of x. And that'll give us minus natural log of x is less than or equal to minus natural log of a, like that. Next, we'll push the right-hand side of the inequality larger by dividing by something that is smaller than 1. So let's do that. This is going to be less than or equal to minus natural log of a over 1 minus a. So why do we know that that's larger? Well, notice that a is on the open interval 0 to 1, making 1 minus a smaller than one, but bigger than zero, which pushes that thing bigger if we're dividing by something like that. Okay, good. Now what we'll do is remember that natural log of one is zero. So we can rewrite this as the natural log of one minus the natural log of a over one minus a. But now notice we almost have the right inequality. Here we have natural log of one minus natural log of a and one minus a, but what we want is natural log of b minus natural log of a over b minus a. And I'm actually gonna leave the rest of it as a homework, so I'll write that here. So the homework is to prove this very last inequality right here, which says that the natural log of b minus natural log of a over b minus a will be bigger than the thing that's right above it. And that finishes off this inequality from the last board, which finishes off the whole problem. And that's a good place to stop.